here. Here we have the GeForce RTX 5070. NVIDIA's always got the cool packaging, don't they? I mean, NVIDIA has already launched the 5090, the 5080, the 5070 Ti. This is the 5070, not to be confused with the 5070 Ti. This has got to be just the leftover parts stapled together with a used rubber band and some duct tape, right? I mean, this looks similar to, but is not the dual flow through design. This is more of a traditional design, but it, it looks like the new design. And, uh, you know, I want to review the card and focus on the technologies and new software and all things that are Blackwell, but that's hard. Why is it hard? Well, price. The pattern with every single other 50 series launch has been MSRP and street price are in no way connected to reality. So hopefully you're watching this video in the far future when things have settled down. And well, I mean, there's actually a lot, there's more than just the price. There's actually a few other things that, I mean, the power connector, but then the power connector is probably not an issue on cards that aren't 600 watts mostly, and then availability again. Like, what? And then there was the part where Jensen said, With the Blackwell family, RTX 5070, 4090 performance at 549. I'm holding in my hands at a 3090. Bruh. Bruh. A 3090? You, you want to set me up for failure? For hate? What are you doing? Uh, I know. FOMO whispers loud. Tempting 5070. But don't splurge. Save cat. Now, now that that's out of my system, let's talk tech first. And then let's talk pricing because, well, I mean, okay. We've already seen what the Blackwell generation 5000 series cards have to offer. And a lot of the cool stuff of the 5000 series in Blackwell are meant to have a little bit of a halo effect for this card. I mean, yes, this is 5000 series, but eh, this card does manage actually to pull out some surprises but it is a really cut down version of the 5000 series family promise. It's cut down even from the 5070 Ti. This is the founder's edition of the 5070. You have to hand it to Nvidia. They really do know how to engineer a cool looking card. Oh, heck, even the box is pretty awesome. There are other models, more models coming from partner brands that have different designs, more traditional designs, but use the same chip. And those should also go on sale tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at the time that I'm filming this video. But, you know, we've got one HDMI 2.1, three DisplayPort 2.1, high bitrate DisplayPort 2.1, and it's a significant downgrade, like I say, over the 5070 Ti. It's got just 12 gigs of GDDR7 VRAM, uh, that being the biggest downgrade. It has a single video encoder decoder versus the two encoders that are on the 5070 Ti, and even for NVIDIA's highest end broadcast features, NVIDIA themselves, really recommend that you have a 5080 with the maximum AI acceleration hardware there to use all of the really cool features of AI broadcast. And yeah, I mean, it's just got, you know, 988 tops versus the 1406 and the 5070 Ti. It's only about 70% of the AI performance. So yeah, but you can use broadcast on this to be sure. And if you checked out the current and promised features of NVIDIA broadcast, and you should if you're a streamer because it's actually some really cool stuff for anybody doing streaming seriously or just as a hobby. Uh, and this card does support a lot of the features of NVIDIA Broadcast, to be clear. But the really, really cool features, NVIDIA recommends a 5080 or above. This card clocks in at just 250 watts and uses the same 12V2 power connector. So modest. Very modest in terms of power. The higher wattage 5090 uses the same connector and is 600 watts, and so 250 watts is way less power, and therefore way less of a risk of melting. And some partner cards are going to have the traditional dual 8-pin PCIe power, so no problems there. Either way is uh, my opinion in terms of power delivery. Should I be worried about melting on this card? No. It is PCIe Gen 5, which is nice. Uh, it's a true two-slot card, which is also very nice. And uh, there's a lot here that uh, would be appealing for smaller and less power hungry builds. Assuming the price to the performance ratio lines up where it should at the time you're buying this card, which makes it hard for me to tell you if it does or not. So let's talk about performance. The artificial benchmarks, well, they're off to a strong start. Similar performance as the 24 gig VRAM 7900 XTX 
Holy smokes. Well, Firestrike looks a bit less rosy, though the 5070 Founders Edition is looking similar to the 4070 Ti, at least the version of the 4070 Ti that we tested, because there's 72 versions of that. Same with Time Spy. The Founders Edition is well behind the 5070 Ti, and basically the same performance as the 4070 Ti, 12 gig from MSI. In Geekbench OpenCL, uh, the 5070 FE pulls ahead of the 7900 XTX, but now also behind the 4070 Ti. Geekbench Vulcan, on the other hand, uh, well, the 5070 Founders Edition is well behind the 7900 XTX, but marginally ahead of the 4070 Founders Edition. Port Royal has the 5070 Ti and the 5070 neck and neck. Now, these are really interesting results for artificial benchmarks, not just these and others. Selective leaks of the benchmarks would suggest that the 5070 will slot in really strongly, especially against prior generation cards. It's a significant uplift. As for Procyon and things that have a little bit more of an AI lean, you've got enough VRAM here to run some of the better 7 billion parameter models, but 12 gigs of VRAM is what holds you back from current and future AI models. I mean, even 16 gigs of RAM is really not as much as it used to be. Uh, if you run some layers from the CPU and some layers from the GPU, kind of a mixed thing, you can get pretty good performance out here, but the performance is pretty similar to the 12 gig 4070 Ti, uh, but the 5070 is a bit faster than the 4070 Ti, so that's, that's good for this generation. For text generation, well, it's the best 12 gig card out of the bunch, but the 5070 Ti with its 16 gigs of VRAM is much faster. And finally, Puget Bench, a little real world, a little artificial, more real world than artificial. It does show some pretty strong numbers for the 5070 Ti. It's slotting in about where one would expect it to. So no surprises there. Cyberpunk 2077, this is one of the best results for this card. And this is just pure rasterization on the ultra preset. 1080p, very respectable, 162 FPS with 120 FPS and 1% lows. And that is a pretty significant uplift over the original 4070 Founders Edition. It's still pretty well short of the 5070 Ti, however. At 1440p, uh, this is a showing that the 5070 is a quite capable 1440p gaming card, 81 FPS for our 1% lows, 104 per FPS average. And keep in mind that the defaults, the default presets in Cyberpunk do use some upscaling technology. 4K, uh, the 4070 was literally unplayable, 38 FPS, I don't think you would have a good uh, playing experience. I did play with frame gen and multi frame gen and uh, whereas I mean I know it's not a big difference between 38 and 43 FPS but that di difference is magnified between the 5070 and the 5070 Ti. Now with ray tracing well I mean this is a this is a this is a 5070 founders edition it's not it's I mean at 1080p okay maybe 1080p 72 FPS maybe 1440p uh, 45 FPS, even with frame gen or multi frame gen, not a great experience. And 4K is just, 4K is right out. Thou shalt count to three. <laughs> no, no more, no less. Five is right out. Yeah, it's like 4K. Horizon Forbidden West, very high preset. And this is just the rasterization test. There's no, no ray tracing here. But the 5070, again, this is a pretty good uplift from 123 to 141 FPS. Not as much gen on gen uplift as we saw in Cyberpunk at 1080p, but not bad. And keep in mind that the 5000 series GPUs at launch were a little weird with their 1080p to 1440p scaling. Like the 1080p on the 5090 is much slower than you would expect versus the performance of the 1440p. It's like a 1080p, some of these absurdly high frame rates, you just, you just don't get the scaling anymore. But here, 1440p and 4K are about where I would expect them to be for Horizon Forbidden West, and shows the, you know, the gen-on-gen -gen uplift from the 4070 Founders Edition to the 40, 5070 Founders Edition. Uh, we're probably in a VRAM limitation scenario here in, with some of these, because that is a huge jump from the 5070 to the 5070 Ti, especially at 1440p. For Horizon Forbidden West with a very high preset and the upscale set to balanced, this is much, much better. A balanced preset here on 1440p with the 5070 Founders Edition, 143 FPS. This would be a very enjoyable uh, play experience on 120 FPS monitor, even before we get into frame gen or multi frame gen. We got a 240 hertz display and beyond. And this is one of the few games where reasonable experience at 4K with the balanced upscaling, okay, and we're not really in a super VRAM constrained experience, and on that high refresh rate OLED monitor, genuinely a good experience at these parameters at 4K. So this is a 4K win for the 5070 in, in my opinion. 
Monster Hunter Wilds is getting ready to come out and there's a benchmark, so we decided, hey, why don't we just uh, give this a run and see how it goes. <laughs> it's between good and excellent. I don't think good is great. So excellent is pretty good. 5070 Founders Edition, 1440p. For this score, okay, I'll take it, 1080p. 4K, eh, you're probably pushing your luck. Monster Hunter Wilds, pre-release benchmark with the ray tracing, on the other hand. Well, the Founders Edition actually does hold its own at 1440p. Again, we just squeak over the excellent line. The 4070 also just squeaks over the excellent line, and there's really not a lot of gen-on-gen -gen uplift between the 4070 and the 5070 for 1440p. Well, really for any of these. Silent Hill 2 Remake with the epic preset and uh, you know no ray tracing or anything like that. There's a big difference between the 5070 and the 5070 Ti, but not as much as you would think. I mean, 107 FPS versus 90 uh, in terms of real gameplay, 1440p and 4K was basically, like it felt okay in this game. It was a little hitchy at 1440p, and I think that's because of the average 60 FPS frame rate. Silent Hill 2 Remake with the epic preset that really, really hurts our performance. The 5070 Founders Edition, we're down to 57 FPS at 1080p. The 5070 Ti was a much more playable 72 FPS with 60 FPS for our 1% lows. Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2, with the ultra preset with uh, you know no ray tracing or anything like that. A very, very respectable 141 FPS. The grouping here between the 5070 Ti and the 5070 Founders Edition, there's really not a ton of performance here. This is just down to the game. There's not a lot of performance difference. The 5070 Founders Edition at 1440 versus the 4070, that's a pretty good generational uplift. 93 FPS, uh, 68 uh, FPS for your 1% your lows. Uh, it's very playable, very enjoyable. At 40 FPS at 4K, this is another one of those games where like, if you dial it down, way down from Ultra, maybe this would be okay at 4K, but you're gonna probably rely on some other uh, technology like upscaling or something like that if you wanted to play a 4k native we see that a little bit in the upscale balanced profile here you know 98 fps on the 5070 and this once again shows the big gains versus fourth generation the 4070 founders edition you know even using balanced upscaling it's not delivering a great experience whereas here it's delivering a good experience at 4k even uh, 98 fps and that is a big generational leap between those two cards, whereas you can see in other resolutions, uh, there's not as much of a generational leap. So depending on which game and configuration you pick, you may get significant gen-on-gen gen gen uplift, or you may only get gen-on-gen gen uplift if you're using uh, particular, you know, like the upscaler settings, and that only applies at 4K, and that only applies because the card's doing some fancy neural thing in the background. I don't know, I just played the games and ran the numbers. For Cyberpunk 2077, I often like to bait y'all, especially in the last couple of videos, by saying, oh, look, the DLSS 4 configuration looked better than native. But that's also true. That's true because in native mode, you can't turn off TAA, at least not without a mod, which is, uh, I suppose, more of a game developer criticism than anything. But it really does look better with DLSS technologies, and TAA is a large part of why. But for NVIDIA's claim, they leaned heavily into the LSS4 features, including new upscaling, new upscaling algorithm, and multi-frame generation. Both of those technologies are interesting and actually work well on this card. Multi-frame generation works great on this card, I would say, but if you don't have a playable frame rate to begin with, multi-frame generation is not gonna help you. Cyberpunk in 4K on this card? No, you can forget that. I love multi-frame gen on the 5090 with a 240 hertz OLED display. But that's because the 5090 would just shred at normal frame rates even before you turn on multi-frame multi gen. I mean, it's because the 5090 has crazy horsepower. This does not have crazy horsepower, and so you can get yourself into trouble. Multi-frame gen was not an enjoyable experience if my underlying frame rate was basically 50, 15 FPS and I was looking to move up to, like, say, 60 FPS. That's just not, that's just not realistic. Even 30 or 35 FPS to, like, 60 to 90 FPS in most games, it's not gonna be an enjoyable experience. If you're already solid-ish at 60 FPS and you wanna enjoy the 120 FPS and beyond that your monitor is capable of, then multi-frame gen can make sense, 
I mean 180 FPS? Yeah, okay. In other words, the real frames of the 3090 are superior to the AI multi-frame generation frames of the 5070. And that's really where it's like, if you just look at the frame numbers, it's like, ah, the, the 3090 can be kind of equal to the 5070, but you really lean heavily into that. But the 5070 is perhaps the lowest percent uplift in raw performance of any of the other 50 series cards that we've looked at. I mean, DLSS 4 works great, don't get me wrong. This card is very effective uh, with the DLSS 4 technologies, including the new algorithm for doing upscaling. And Cyberpunk 2077 is a great experience at 1080p and 1440p with this card with those technologies turned on. And they're turned on by default. If you use the presets in the game, you get those presets. And that's because most gamers don't have $2,000 GPUs. They have something more akin to this. Oh, here's the 700 pound leather jacket in the room, the pricing. It's a bit hard to compare the 4070 in terms of pricing and value because the 4070 when it launched was really not a great value. And you, you don't have to convince yourself of that because Nvidia released several other versions of the 4070, including ones with more VRAM. You know, competitive pressure, I think was why they did that. The big bump there was they moved to 16 gigs on some of the later 4070 models. So I wasn't surprised that the 5070 Ti remained at 16 gigs, but the 5070 staying at 12 gigs of VRAM, even though it is GDDR7, I was a little surprised at it. I was a little surprised this card was not 16 gigs of, of VRAM. After seeing the performance, it actually does make sense. The GPU itself really can't push that many pixels on its own. So even if it had more VRAM, it really wouldn't benefit. Well, okay, the AI workloads probably would benefit, but a lot of things really wouldn't, wouldn't benefit from the workloads. And the neural compression, high resolution textures, that kind of stuff is sort of new, and so it's probably gonna be awesome. But the other DLSS4 technologies definitely demonstrate that they uh, lessen the GPU VRAM pressure. And you know, with the game testing I've been doing, if you use those technologies, yes, that's true. It does lessen the VRAM pressure. And so NVIDIA is hoping that if you lean into those DLSS4 technologies and neural compression on textures and so on and so forth, you won't miss the extra four gigs of VRAM. And this will do just fine with 12 gigs of VRAM. It's probably gonna be a little disappointing uh, for gamers that are looking for raw performance and the raw performance of this card. It would have been nice if the raw performance were a little higher. And who knows? Who knows what Intel or, or AMD has up their sleeve? Although, you know, we it is like March basically and XESS2 from Intel, like XESS1 is kind of broken in some scenarios. Oh, what's going on with that? So let me leave you with one more haiku. Is this a bad price? Then will rivals pounce? or fumble. Stay tuned tomorrow. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forum. Yo!